All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have a phenomenal West Coast hip-hop veteran right here live on the line. We got Mad Factor. And ladies and gentlemen, it is the man's birthday. So you know he's being generous today, giving us a little bit of his time on, on his birthday. Yep, yep, yes, thank you. I gotta say, man, how's everything out there in California, man? It must be a phenomenal day to enjoy some palm trees and, and just the beach, man. I gotta say, I'm definitely jealous sitting down here in Canada knowing you can look out that window and see some beautiful palm trees. Oh, yeah, definitely that. But you know what's crazy, though? All of a sudden, we decided to get rain today. So the, it's raining out here right now, and we got fires happening. So it's interesting. The rain came while the fire showed up. I gotta say that's actually a good thing, man. Hopefully, them fires uh, fires get put out soon, man. I was I, I was seeing that on KTLA, man, because we got that station down here in Canada, and it's tragic, man, just seeing the video footage of these fires so close to individuals' homes, man. I, I couldn't imagine, you know, having a beautiful home out, out there in the hills, and the next thing you know, just knowing a fire is coming, man. It's quite sad to just to know you might lose your home. Yeah, for real, for real. That's super crazy. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy though, because the um. You know, the, all of a sudden, the, the rain showed up right when it happened, so that's a good thing for sure, that. And also, Matt, I know you're a busy individual, man, so I'm going to dive right into this interview, but I want to take you back to the beginning of your amazing career this far, and I have to ask, man, what originally inspired you to pursue a career within the music industry initially? Shit, initially what got me going was my brother, MCB, and Big Hell. Being around them and watching them enjoy Ice Cube and LL Cool J. But then, when I seen Doggy Dog, Snoop Dogg, when I seen him make it, bro, and I was able to go with my big brothers to the video shoot and be behind the scenes when they were doing What's My Name, and they was under this bridge, and I seen them, and I was little. I'm like, man, this shit is hard. This is dope. So just watching Snoop get down under that bridge and up and dabs, I'm like, yeah, this is right at home. I can do this. I played baseball at the time, too. I was playing baseball, and, man, I veered off and wanted to do that rap music. And when you actually said you actually saw them under the bridge, did you actually see them in person, or was it actually on a music video on television? On the What's My Name video. It was It was on What's My Name video. I, I was there under the bridge. It was the Long Beach. My brothers, I used to always hang with my big bros. And they, you know, they, my brother Brian, MC, he, he no dog, so he got the lowdown on where the video was in Long Beach for what's my name when it was on the roof and everything, you know. He got, he said, come on, little bro, let's go with it. And shit, when I seen that, I'm like, hold up, two dog doing it like that. He this close, and we get to him, and he was Dr. Dre, so it made me feel like, yeah, I want to do this, I can do this too. And I got to say as well, man, like from what you can remember, because obviously you were young then, if you don't mean asking, man, wh- 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 how-, how many people were there in the crowd? Because I do know me personally, I've seen the music video with a lot of people, but I do know sometimes they have camera tricks and whatnot to make it seem like more people are actually there than, than it was. Like, What was the atmosphere like just being able to be pr- pretty much in that music video? So look here, this is what went down. My bro then was at the VIP when they was on the building, but that's legit. Them people who was there was legit. My bro was in the midst of all that, telling jokes and bagging. My brother, a comedian, so he was there with that big-ass crowd. Then they maneuvered over to the other location under the bridge. Later on or the next day, something like that, that's when I got to go with my bro. When they did that part under the bridge where they, like, stand there. You remember on What's My Name video and it's corrupt? Daz and Snoop, and they was like under that. They standing there on one part. I can't picture the exact words of the part from what's my name, but it was when Corrupt was there. And I think he said, what's your name, fool? Under that, yeah, that was that scene. So I wasn't at the, um, at the VIP part, bro. And also as well, man, in the year 2012, you actually released the amazing single titled Yellow Jackets via SoundCloud. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a story behind this earlier release project. And of course, is it still indeed on SoundCloud to be streamed to be streamed or added to a playlist today? Wow, that's crazy, bro. I appreciate you. You've been doing your research, big dog. That's a, um, so what happened, man, it was this dude, this football player who used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. 
Um, he got that no for UCLA and he got drafted by the Steelers, but he ain't do nothing. Um, but anyway, he um got at me and wanted to work on some music with me, bro. And he he put that project together with these dudes in um, Orange County, and we we're supposed to do some shit with it. But man, this game be janky, bro. And we never really followed up. But that was a hot record, and he kind of brought that record to me. And um, we uh we dropped the record, and it, it just was really no it was no energy. He was everything was lazy after it. You know what I'm saying? I got to say, man, you always got to love some of those individuals, man, that, that have that. You know what I mean? Everything seems good at, good at first, and the next thing you know, it just, like, completely just flops, man. It, it's sad, because I got to say, that song was actually phenomenal, man. So, uh, I got to say, I would really love to actually hear more from you guys, but by the sounds of it, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Well, that record, you know, that's my record. You can find it on, I'll get you, I want to say that record is up on um, SoundCloud still. With some of the other older music I had that that was pretty much through that guy I was working with at the time, um, but it's there. I could go get it. But as far as just super pushing it, it's not a super plan for that. But we definitely got a lot of music coming though, for sure, bro. A lot of it's just it's just timing and setting it up. I wish I can get that shit to y'all like today, right now. Hey, but you already know, once it's polished and fine-tuned, man, you already know we here at 97.7 FM are definitely going to spin it, man. So if you send it, we are going to spin it. Man, I appreciate you. I'm so happy, bro. You're not even understand this. I invested in myself, took my time, and just try to cut out all that bullshit where you be dealing with people like that who come to you and act like we go do this and do that because they got the environment set up, the equipment or whatever. So I said, okay, let me get my own shit. Now I'm able to cut out all that extraness that's just, it'll drain you, bro. It'll drain your energy. So, yeah, we got a lot of music coming, um, clothes coming. I'm working with other artists. We got a lot of it, bro. It's God time, and you, you go get a whole bunch of it, man. I'm hungry and starving still. And also as well, I actually read that you actually are the man behind the 99.1 KGGI intro that has been playing on the radio for years. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that, in, uh, sorry about that uh, intro. And of course, how did that opportunity originally arise for you? We talking about that. We got what you want, what you need right now. Yeah, that's one of them records, man. That was me just... I'm one of them dudes, I'm a go-getter, and I move solo a lot of time because it's, you know, when you move that way, you don't, you don't, people don't feel threatened. So what happened is I said, man, let me go up to 99.1 and mingle, and let me smash and meet a few individuals. I went up there early one morning and um, just chilling in the parking lot, man. I ran into the pro, one of the program, or he, I think he was the program director or just one of the DJs, and I was just loitering in that motherfucker, loitering, hanging out. And I was like, what's happening, man? I was just trying to meet you and get some music to you. He liked my drive. His name was Mike Medina. Mike Medina. And he liked my drive. And he said, um, we just started networking, bro. And he's like, um, how you feel about doing the drop? He liked my music. I let him hear it. Then he said, can you give me some drops? I gave him drops, bro. And he started running. And we did like two or three drops. That's me and a guy named Tony Rock. Who sing looks for me. So we did that drop for him. He liked it, and he kept running it, man, for about a year, maybe even longer than that, because we did two or three of them. Now I think about it, shit, but that one was a staple for a long time, that we got what you want right here. That was a heavy one. And I got to say as well, man, especially if the if the listeners are vibing to it and enjoying it, man, there's no point in fixing what's not broken, man. They might as well just keep that already spinning and, and, in, and in the commercial rotation. No doubt, no doubt. Um, you know, that was a little minute ago with that situation, and then, you know, Mike Mike Medina built his own environment and not even with that station like that right now, but I, I'm still connected to a few people at that station, man, but um, I had to, I'm revamping a few things, but we we, we, we going to be back on that station here shortly, man, but it's going to be a bigger, bigger situation because I have built relationships with a few guys. This game is about relationships, and believe me, I know how to do that. And also as well, on September 25th of 2018, you actually released a single titled Just Can't Do It featuring Young Zeke. I was wondering, what is the story behind that song? And of course, how did yourself and Zeke get connected? Oh, man, me and, me and Young Zeke, we go way back, bro. 
I met Young Zeke through a producer named Shot G. Shot G, um, I would go work with him all the time, and then he brought me in, and Zeke used to come through there and do music. And um, Zeke was dope, you know. He was always one of my favorites who used to come through there. So, you know, I just hollered at Shock. He was like, yeah, that's my little bro. We can get you on the record with him. And we started working. Young Zeke was, he used to, Zeke liked me a lot for hooks. So I just, I would present hooks to Zeke, you know what I'm saying? And, and he would get out, man. So I just built that relationship through Shock. And I gave Zeke, you know, me and Zeke worked for a lot of years. But we got other music that's whew, phenomenal. We even got a record with me, Zeke, Goldie Low, and Zeke Brothers, Sam I L. That's in the cut, bro. I don't know what they doing with that, but that shit hard. With Daz and shit, that shit goes super hard. We even performed in it. No, no, that one not with Daz. That's with Goldie Low. My fault. That one with Goldie Loken. It's hard, man. So, yeah, man, me and him, Zeke, real cool, bro. And when you actually said a few moments ago about Shock G, uh, going, just going back to that for a moment, do you mean Shock G of Digital Underground, or is this a, another Shock G? <laughs> That's funny. I knew you were going to say that. No, nah, this Shock G is the Shock G from Long Beach, the first person Snoop Dogg ever did music with. And he put, and was, I'm saying that because I, I was mingling and doing some spot tour dates with Doggy Dog, and I had my video camera, and we was chilling. And when I was doing the footage, Snoop put it out there. Shot G, the first person I ever did music. And that's Shot G from Long Beach. If he got a big history, bro, with the East Siders, everybody. Him and Snoop was real close. But, um, yeah, so that's who that is. This is Shot G from Long Beach. If you do your research, he's he's a singer. He's a producer. Um, he's somebody I look up to, bro. He just make real music. You know what I'm saying? He a G in this shit, so. Me and him, like I said, that's why that's why I met Zeke through and Snoop did his first shit with Shaq G. First, first person he did music with. So. <laughs> And I'm going to be 100% honest with you, man, and I will admit this live on my radio station, Airwaves. I did not know that there was another Shock G out there, man. That, like, like they say, you learn something new every day, so I definitely got to do my research and look more look more into him. Hey, who cool. look more into him? He happy, bro. That's my people. I talk to him. He, he in France right now. He out in France getting it in, but, yeah, he heavy, bro. I don't know if you heard, you heard of the Young Giants. I heard of them, yeah. Yeah, go read. He got a banger with Day One and the Young Giants, one of my favorites. But he got way more. Once you start digging into him, he got way more. But the one he do with the Young Giants and shit, I think that shit hard. Like, that, like should be pushed even more. That record, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, if you wanted to holler at him or whatever, that's my boy, boy. We can connect it. And also as well, you actually own your own merchandise line as well by the name of Factor Merch. I was wondering, what originally made you decide to start up your clothing line? And of course, where can our listeners actually buy, the, buy themselves some Mad Factor swag today? Wow, that's dope. I appreciate you, man, for that. Um, Basically, the whole Factor Merch thing is just, just me just staying outside the box with my mind, knowing it's got to be bigger than music. And the whole Factor Merch thing is just, I felt like I wanted to take my name, which is Mad Factor, but it has to be bigger than me. You know what I mean? It has to be broader than just Mad Factor. So I just said I'm going to cut off the Mad, but it's a factor across the world everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I just said I'm going to build my brand and make it start make it a, for all the factors around the world making things happen. That's basically what the whole the whole thing is about. Anybody around, everybody feel like they're a factor. So right now we just pushing that brand and trying to spread it throughout the you know without the world, bro. With and right now I'm about to have this kid line that's real dope too. We pushing. So I'm building um I'm building the whole brand right now. I'm just setting it up, making sure I got all the product that I'm super happy with, and I think I've narrowed it down now. So right now we just doing it on Instagram, and uh, you can follow me on on Instagram. It's called at Factor Merch. And that's F A C T O R M E R C H at Factor Merch. And then you can come follow me too at Mad Factor. So just go to the Factor Merch. You can inbox me, let me know. I'm trying to touch the people close right now to know who real who real really messing with me. You know what I'm saying? So get at me, inbox me on the at Factor Merch and we'll work it out, man. I'll get the merch to you from there for now, but the website is being built. 
And I gotta say as well, man, you actually have some high quality merch out there as well, man. I was looking at some of them t-shirts, man. So when I get paid from when I get paid from work, man, I definitely gotta snag myself a t-shirt, man. You got some high quality stuff. Wow, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you for that, man. Definitely want to get you in it. Shit, it's cool. I like what you're doing too. Shit, I need to get some of that. I seen the homie on B tip, B tip in the mix was in that thing the other day, wearing that, looking sharp in it. I gotta say as well, that definitely surprised me when he took when he sent me that picture of him and uh, D Nice. I was like, whoa. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm, to me, that was an honor. Just you know, B Tip could have wore anything to that party, man, but he decided to rep my station and start showing legends, man. So that that was a definitely an honor, man. So definitely shout out to B Tip. No doubt. I'm sure he probably listening. Shout out B Tip. That's a good dude, man. I unselfish a team player. That's how we getting down. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that was dope. I was like, man, that's hard. I got to say as well, man, definitely got got to love Amazon, man. I was actually uh, very, I, I don't really trust Amazon and the multi-million dollar companies, man, but I got the opportunity to go th put my merch through them, and I figured with me doing five jobs with the radio station, might as well cut, might as well cut one more job and let someone else do it for me. <laughs> That's for sure. No, I'm funny. You crazy. No, I'm funny like that, too. I don't be trusting a lot of these companies with my shit either, but we got to do it. I want to tell you, though, man, I appreciate you just, just for the energy and just reaching out, man. This this game is a crazy game, bro. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you just noticing the music and seeing me doing what I do because I see the people that you got on your platform. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the people you got on your platform is big-time dudes that got a big history. So I, I appreciate you seeing me coming up making these moves, bro. Even Sandman. Shout out to Sandman. Yeah, I, I see he gonna be on your show. I had some work with him too, some heavy work. I gotta say as well, man. I, I love interviewing the producers, man. Just being able to chop it up, cause like the producers, man, they see a lot of amazing stuff and do a lot of amazing stuff. Some people, they just sometimes people forget about the producers and the DJs and the behind the scenes workers, man. But they got stories too. Shit, them the ones, and I don't know why. What they tripping off? Them the ones, man. That's what I fuck with, bro. My energy is channeled to a. I mess with a different, a lot of producers. I like just, it's just cool to be able to just enjoy different music and instruments. Don't get put in no box. Like right now, I feel like I've been putting out a lot of just, just you know, West, it's kind of West Coast, but I try to take the chorus or and make it broader than just West Coast. Like the the record I got out, the one, a lot going on. People think those tracks is West Coast. The music is kind of West for sure. But I feel like the topics that we sit on them things is broad. A lot going on across the world for everybody, not just on the West Coast. You look like the one when you see that bad one, she got that nice car, she got that good insurance with that nice house, and you want a nice one in your life, it's the one. That's all across the world, you know what I'm saying? But the music production is right now we choosing this West because it's the summertime. So it's timing. But stay with me, buddy. We got a lot of it. I go all across the board with this thing. And also as well, on January 17th of 2022, you actually released a song titled titled uh, Tables Turn uh, featuring Danny Balance. I was wondering, how did yourself and Danny originally get connected? And of course, what was it like just working with him in the studio on this particular project? That's funny you ask that. That's one of them ones. That's one of them guys. That guy's special. And he just wanted to do from around the way. I just used to see him around the way in the hood, neighborhoods around the way. And we just always, what's up, how you doing? And he just wanted them younger dudes with that energy who's just, he does everything, bro. When I tell you everything, he does music. He, he not even close to 25. He does music. He'll take, he'll take your whole car apart. Um, he, he, he raps. He engineers, um, he do oil changes, he, you name it, bro. He, matter of fact, he cut my hair the other day. My hair, he cut my hair sometimes. <laughs> you know, he made, gave me a dope haircut. So it just, him, bro, is just one of them dudes around the way, and we just kept talking. And um, somehow, I found, we was talking, and he, he started talking about music, bro, randomly. I didn't even know he did music for a long time. And then, basically, I heard him, and I was like, this is a no-brainer, so... Danny Balance is special. Believe that. He got a lot of it. And my matter of fact, my next single, I'm pretty sure that's going to be released, is going to be with Danny Balance and somebody else that um, um, 
I got to get the okay on real quick. But Danny Balance already did his verse. So, yeah, he dope, bro. He dope, 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 dope. And also as well, on July 19th of 2022, you, you teamed up with uh, uh, QP and, of course, uh, B-Tip as well to release the amazing collaborative single uh, titled A Lot Going On. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners this, just the story behind this phenomenal project. And, of course, what was it like just working alongside these two fellow West Coast artists? Man, that record is just one of them records that just fell in pocket. QP, um... It's QP put that record in play, basically. Um, QP got a thing. He like me, though. We we, we, we work odd hours. So QP was like, I want to say like 5 in the morning. He sent me that record like early in the morning just to beat. And I'm like, hold up. This is kind of hard. So I sat on that for a few hours, that beat. And then I just dropped that chorus. I came up with that chorus. And then I sent it back to QP, and he was like, man, this is cool. This will go. It's hard. So we, um, me and QP was feeling it, and then we was like, we, we want to bring in B-Tip. B-Tip in the mix was, we thought, you know, B-Tip in the mix, he, he doing his DJ thing. We wanted to have that whole effect. I'm inspired by DJ Drama. You know what I'm saying? DJ Drama inspires me, so B-Tip is my DJ Drama, so I feel like, let me get B-Tip to spit over the record and yell over the record for us. And um, and when we played it for B-Tip, he was like, man, this is y'all single. Like, y'all should go with right now. I was like, that's what's up, man. We thought this was solid. So with him stamping it and John Hancock, it, it was like, it's a no-brainer. It was a great situation because those guys, is, man, they ain't got no egos. It's easy to work with them dudes. Because dealing with this game, you get some funny dudes. You can't tell them nothing. They think they control the whole studio. They they know it all. So with them dudes, we able to go back and forth. If we don't like this, we can take that out. And it ain't no egos. We It's just all for the best. So it's a great experience working with them. I got a lot more with them also. And also as well, I actually have that song locked and loaded to actually play here on the Canadian FM dial the moment this broadcast actually commences, man. So if the listeners haven't heard this song, they're definitely going to hear it here first on 97.7 FM. Dope, dope, dope. Thank you, man. Big shout out to you, man. I appreciate this for sure. We're going to keep pushing this thing. Um, shout out to everybody who inspired me. Shout out to Big, Big Snow Dog. Shout out to Shot G. Shout out to um, to this artist in San Diego to keep it real with you, a dude named Loose Lyrics. Shout out to Loose Lyrics, straight up. He one of my favorites out of Dago. Shout out to Young Z. And Shout that- out to Cali the Gay. And also, man, one of the last questions I have, man, because honestly, after listening to this phenomenal song that you guys have been pushing all summer long, you three have some of the best chemistry that I've actually heard on a West Coast song in, in probably so many years, man. So I have to ask, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the other listeners are, are wondering this as well. Do you guys have plans to actually come together as a hip-hop trio, man? Because I think you guys would be a force to be reckoned with. Wow, that's what's up. That's dope. Yeah, y'all heard that. Y'all heard what he said, West Coast. Come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all heard what he said, bro. We were some of them guys out west. I'm sorry, bro. I just want that be wanted that to be known because I feel like sometimes we get more energy as new artists sometimes. If we not clicked up with certain people, we get more new we get more energy away from Cali. Which I know that record is a heavy record, bro. It's just time. It's going to be a time for it. It's timing. And getting it in the right person's hands whose mind is wide open. But anyway, we're going to keep pushing. And I already know what's in the, in the holster. We got records, bro. I know what's good music. That's one thing I can say God bless me with a great ear. And it's just time. And we're going to keep giving it to you until you've got to give it up. But like, but as far as B-Tip and QP, yeah, we, we as far as the group, I don't know about that because QP got some stuff he want to do, like a solo project he working on. But QP did say he want to put his, possibly his solo project on hold and put out what we've been working on. So it might just be something like the EP, a quick situation, because me and him and B-Tip got a lot of work together. So we got, we got to figure out exactly how to release it, but... As far as a group, I don't. I wouldn't say a group was shit. A EP with just us and a few more, 
few more other factors that I'm going to have on the EP. Yeah, man, you never know, though, bro. But I have to ask, man, what is next for yourself, Mad Factor? Because I do know right now you guys are currently on the campaign trail for this phenomenal song. But what is next for yourself as a solo artist, Mad Factor? Well, next for me as a solo artist, which I'm, I'm slowly just veering to where I want to just do production and be a writer. Because I done wrote for several people and I want to just write and bring new people to the table and there's so much talent on this West Coast that we don't get to enjoy for whatever reason. We can talk about later because I could go on and on. I just think it's, it's some other talent to bring to the table that I, 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 I got, got around me, bro. I got access to it, and you go get to hear it soon. Um, I feel like what the next thing that we need to do for what I need to do is put out this YAF project. So that's what I got going, the YAF project is what we're working on, and I'll be releasing the first single from that project within, should I would say within a month, bro. We're not going to wait long. We're not going to wait long no more. That was my problem in the past. I felt I wasn't consistent, and I took breaks too long. But we ain't breaking no more because I invested, and I don't got to wait on the weirdos with my music. You know what I'm saying? So when you invest in yourself, you don't got to wait on the weirdos and keep dropping and keep dropping. And now y'all asses is trouble. You can hate if you want, but we got so much of it. And also as well, Mad Factor, this time in the interview quickly, man, that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves, just a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but most of all, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything you got going on. Man, I just want to say shout-out to you. B-Tip in the mix is QP, 50 the season. That's my cousin. He stay grinding. Um... I want to shout out my sister Joy Dub, MCB for inspiring me, Snoop Dogg, Biggie Smalls is the illest. That's my favorite rapper. But um, I want to say um, you can find me uh, on IG at Mad Factor, and that's M A A D F A C T O R. Don't forget that it's two A's in that M A A D F A C T O R. And if you want the merch, you go to at Factor Merch. F-A-C-T-O-R-M-E-R-C-H. And um, another shout-out is just to the people, the G's who always recognize talent early, bro. It's like I've been blessed by some real G's who, who brought me to the table to certain things. Because, you know, I just do music, bro. I'm not a game bang rapper or a game banger. I'm just connected to the streets. My people around me get out. And I've been around, and I would say I'm thugged out with it. I'm a thug rapper and a reality and a street rapper, but I'm thankful to real G's, bro, some real ones that blessed me to shut some studios down for me. Shout out to Papa, Big Papa. Um, shout out to Papa. Um, shout out to Dale Dog. So, sir, shout out to the big G's who embraced me, Lou, and my big bro, MCB, AK, Bryant, people like that. I just want to say thank y'all for noticing the talent and. You know, the G's don't be on no bullshit, bro. Sometimes it be the young dudes don't want to give it up at first. Shout out to Jay the Kiss, Cook. I fuck with Jay to all that. And the videos with Jay to all that, bro. So the real ones know it just was, it's a revamp right now. And the revamp go be in love. In love. For real, though. And I gotta say, first and foremost, Matt, thank you so much, man, for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and sliding into the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM dial, man. It was definitely an honor and most definitely a privilege, man. And hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Man, I'm blessed, bro, to even be able to get this situation with you, bro. I see you, you know, this big thing out here with the platform, and thank you. Uh, we definitely go get it in again, God timing, you know what I'm saying? I look forward to just building building with you, bro, and staying connected. Thank you for the blessing. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome. I'm only a DM and a phone call away, man. So anything you need, don't hesitate to reach out, man. I definitely got you. Hey, I appreciate you. Let's get you in that merch, and let's keep pushing this song, man, and take it to the next level, bro. Uh, we got a lot going on, and B-Tip in the mix keep telling me the one is still the one to keep moving with, so... You know, we could keep running that till we drop the official single for the YAF project by Mad Factor. You heard what I'm saying? We're going to tell you what that YAF mean later, though. It's a, it's a thing that means, you know, it's something that 
that yes, mean we will talk about that, but just that's the project we gonna get to. That's gonna be happening, go ahead and bang this on here. You know what I'm saying? It's some real music, some real music with concepts too, you know, shit like that. And I gotta say, man, once that drops, I'll definitely get some, definitely get some airplay on that here in Canada, man. But also for now, man, definitely have yourself a phenomenal night and of course a great evening and enjoy the rest of your birthday, man. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.